Welcome to AP Psychology Unit 4, Part 7. In this video, we'll explore the fascinating world of emotions. Emotions are complex reactions that involve three key components, physiological arousal, expressive behaviors, and conscious experience. Let's break these down further. Physiological arousal refers to the physical changes our bodies go through, like increased heart rate or sweaty palms. Expressive behaviors are the outward signs of what we're feeling, such as smiling when we're happy or frowning when we're upset. Conscious experience is the personal interpretation and feeling of the emotion itself. Common emotions we experience include anger, disgust, happiness, surprise, fear, and sadness. By understanding these basic elements and types of emotions, we can better grasp how they influence our daily lives and interactions. So, get ready to dive deep into the incredible world of emotions and discover how they shape our behavior and mental processes. Several comprehensive theories have been developed to explain how emotions arise. The first theory we'll discuss is the James Lang theory. This theory proposes that our subjective experience of emotion is directly tied to our physiological responses. Essentially, we feel emotion because we are aware of how our bodies react to certain stimuli. For instance, we might feel scared because our heart starts pounding when we see a snake. Next, we have the Cannon-Bard theory. Unlike the James Lang theory, the Cannon-Bard theory suggests that we experience physiological arousal and emotion simultaneously. According to this theory, when we encounter an emotion-arousing stimulus, our brain sends signals that trigger both the physical response and the emotional experience at the same time. This means that seeing a snake would cause our heart to pound and make us feel fear simultaneously. Finally, the Schachter-Singer two-factor theory integrates elements of both cognition and physical reaction. This theory posits that emotions arise from a combination of physical arousal and cognitive labeling. In other words, once we experience physiological arousal, we then identify a suitable emotion based on our environment and the context of the situation. For example, if our heart is pounding after seeing the snake, we cognitively appraise the situation and label the emotion as fear. Together, these theories offer diverse perspectives on the intricate processes behind our emotional experiences. While each theory provides a unique explanation, they all converge on the idea that both our minds and bodies play crucial roles in shaping our emotions. The facial feedback hypothesis suggests that facial expressions can influence our emotional experiences. For instance, smiling can make us feel happier. The behavior feedback effect extends this idea, proposing that our behaviors can also affect our emotions. Walking with an upright posture and a confident stride can enhance feelings of confidence. These insights highlight the powerful interplay between our physical actions and emotional states, allowing us to potentially improve our mood and feelings through conscious changes in our expressions and behaviors. The broaden and build theory proposed by Barbara Fredrickson suggests that positive emotions play a crucial role in our lives beyond just making us feel good. These emotions expand our cognitive and perceptual capabilities, encouraging us to think more creatively and explore new possibilities. This broadening effect not only enhances our moment-to-moment -moment experiences, but also contributes to building lasting resources over time. For instance, joy and personal connections can foster stronger social bonds, while curiosity and interest can lead to new skills and knowledge. In essence, positive emotions help us grow by enhancing our physical health, strengthening our intellectual capabilities, and expanding our social networks. This theory underscores the importance of fostering positive emotional experiences as a way to improve overall well-being and resilience. Universal emotions, such as anger, disgust, happiness, surprise, fear, and sadness, are recognized across all cultures. They're deeply rooted in our biology and manifest similarly regardless of cultural background. However, cultural display rules come into play to dictate how and when these emotions should be expressed. These rules can significantly differ between cultures, shaping how we perceive and express emotions during social interactions. Whether it's the reserved expression of joy in Japan or the overt celebration seen in Western countries, these variations highlight the intricate balance between our biological humanity and cultural identity. Understanding these concepts is essential for appreciating the universality 
and diversity of emotional expressions in our globalized world. Understanding emotion theories isn't just academic, it has real-life implications. Firstly, these theories can help us navigate social interactions more effectively. By recognizing our own emotional triggers and others' reactions, we can respond in ways that foster positive communication. Additionally, managing emotional responses is crucial, especially in high-stress situations. By applying theories like the Schachter-Singer two-factor theory, we can reframe our emotional experiences and approach problems with a cooler head. Finally, this understanding leads to improved emotional intelligence. When we're able to identify and manage our own emotions, we're better equipped to understand and empathize with others, strengthening our interpersonal relationships and contributing to a more emotionally literate society. In summary, knowing how emotions work isn't just fascinating, it's incredibly practical. From boosting our social skills to enhancing our emotional resilience, these theories provide frameworks that can improve our everyday lives. Let's test your knowledge with a few true or false questions. Ready? Here we go. True or false? The James Lang theory suggests that emotions are our awareness of physiological responses to stimuli. That's true. Next, true or false? The Cannon-Bard theory states that physiological responses and the experience of emotion happen sequentially. That's false. The Cannon-Bard theory actually suggests they happen simultaneously. How about this one? True or false? The facial feedback hypothesis suggests that our facial expressions can influence our emotions. That's true. Now, true or false? The Broaden and Build theory emphasizes the role of negative emotions in building social resources. That's false. The Broaden and Build theory emphasizes the role of positive emotions. Finally, true or false? Display rules are cultural norms that dictate how and when emotions should be expressed. That's true. Great job on the quiz. If any answers tripped you up, feel free to review the video again for a deeper understanding. In summary, we've delved into the captivating study of emotions. We've examined the James Lang theory, which interprets emotions as our awareness of physiological responses. The Cannon-Bard theory, on the other hand, posits that emotions and physiological responses occur simultaneously. The Schachter-Singer two-factor theory highlights the importance of cognitive appraisal in the emotion experience. We also discussed the facial feedback hypothesis and behavior feedback effect, which tell us that our expressions and behaviors can shape our emotions. The broaden and build theory emphasized how positive emotions can expand our awareness and build lasting resources. Additionally, we explored universal emotions, recognized across all cultures, and the display rules that dictate how emotions should be expressed within different cultural contexts. Understanding these concepts empowers us to navigate our social world with greater emotional intelligence. Thanks for joining us on this journey through the theories of emotion. Stay curious and keep exploring the world of psychology. Thanks for watching. We hope this deep dive into the theories of emotion has given you a new perspective. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button, comment your thoughts below, and don't forget to subscribe for more insightful content on psychology and beyond. Your engagement helps us bring more educational videos to you. Stay curious and keep learning.